creators exists within us. Humanity has always had the potential to recognize its flaws and choose a better way. Can we save humanity? Was bringing her here the right choice? What's up guys, welcome back. Now this is another in-depth technical discussion that I've been wanting to do for a while now. And now that there is more info that continues to be revealed, it makes sense to dive into this now. So thanks for joining, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for showing your support and hitting the like button. You really are helping out by doing that and getting more eyes on the content going forward. So first things first, some of you have asked me on Twitter about this regarding the new NVIDIA Shield TV Pro, which leaked on Amazon and then removed a few days ago. The leak suggests it's running a new variant of the Tegra X1 called the X1 Plus, which they say boosts performance by up to 25%. Now some have speculated that this could be used in a Switch Pro, but in all likelihood, all this chip is, guys, is the same newer Mariko chip that is currently being used in the Switch Lite and Switch Revision. Remember, the NVIDIA Shield TV is not portable. It's a small device that plugs into your TV only. So it doesn't necessarily have to worry about its clock speeds being limited in a portable mode or docked mode, and it doesn't have to worry about battery savings. So this new Shield TV sounds like it's simply able to hit higher boosts of performance while staying within its TDP range. The Switch Revision, on the other hand, runs at the same clock speeds as the original Switch, but it's far more energy efficient on its battery. But no doubt, if the revision was clocked higher than the original Switch, like many modders are currently doing already, the performance gains would likely be over 25% easily, but at the cost of the battery of course, which will likely bring the battery back to the regular Switch OG range or so, give or take. So long story short, I don't think this new Shield TV is something anyone should be keeping an eye on for its chip to be used in a future Switch since it's very likely already being used in the current models. Also, again, if you're a new subscriber, since a lot of you are, be sure to watch my ultimate new Switch info video where I go over all the public information, including evidence of Nintendo working on a customized multi-threaded SOC. So with all this info we've uncovered here, the new technology we've discussed, and the more new technology to discuss in this video even, and the recent continued new security exploits found in the Tegra X1 processor, it's looking less and less likely Nintendo will use anything related to the Tegra X1 going forward. And honestly, in my opinion guys, that would be a smart choice by Nintendo at this point. Point. So now we'll get into the main course of this video, the next generation of gaming for Nintendo and the industry. Now despite what some may think with where Nintendo is currently headed with the Switch, the fact remains that with every new console generation Nintendo has always, always released a new flagship console around the same time as the competition, and there has always been competition besides in the NES days at least. The current generation of consoles which started with the Wii U in 2012 is set to end in 2020 with the introduction of the PS5 and Xbox Scarlet. Nintendo as we know cut life short of the Wii U basically at the end of 2016, just four years into its life. Then Nintendo released the Switch in March 2017 to continue on this generation of the PS4 and Xbox One. Now regardless of what generation fans think the Switch is, or if the Switch is in its own generation in itself, it's up for the fans to decide. However, the fact remains, the video game industry, meaning the lead platform holders and AAA developers and publishers of brand new blockbuster games, they actually decide when a new console generation starts. So, in this case, Sony and its PlayStation brand are deciding that the next generation of consoles will start in holiday 2020. And when they announced the PS5's launch timing, since literally all AAA third party and all developers in general make games for the PlayStation, and the fact that PS4 has sold over 100 million consoles already this generation, it makes sense that they would be controlling the next generation narrative and the rest of the industry, including Xbox and now Nintendo, needing to follow suit. Just like the Nintendo 64 upgraded to GameCube, it did so around the same time as PlayStation 2 and Xbox Original, 
Same with the Wii, which Nintendo said wasn't competing with the PlayStation 3 at the time, but Nintendo still released the Wii in holiday 2006 at the same time as the PS3 basically as competition. Wii U came out one year before the PS4 and ended up being Nintendo's Dreamcast, but it's still an 8th gen console. So now with the Switch we have a console that is selling very well for Nintendo, but with a slight caveat. Now the PS4 and Xbox One with both their successors announced early in 2019, sales have come to a halt as people anticipate the 2020 next gen race. However, even in the current generation of consoles with PS4, game development has already started to advance to the next generation right now. The demo I showed during the intro of this video is called Rebirth Introducing Photorealism in Unreal Engine 4 running on a single GTX 1080 Ti in Unreal Engine 4 with no ray tracing enabled. And the developers at Quixel made that demo rendering it at 5K resolution at film quality frame rate 24 frames per second. Now let's take a look at a brief explanation from Quixel themselves on how easy it actually was to get that demo working. Hi guys, this is Joe Garth from Quixel. Thousands of you have asked how our latest real-time cinematic rebirth was made, almost not believing that the technology has come to this point where photorealism is possible in real time. But we're here to tell you that finally, photorealism is now not only possible in real time and for games being made right now, but that when you use these cutting-edge real-time tools and assets, it's incredibly easy. What you see is not pre-rendered, this is running in real time on a mainstream gaming computer with a single 1080 Ti. Not only that, this is a fully interactive world. It's completely playable. I'm just going to jump into the game here and have a quick run around the scene. So as you can see, you can fully interact with the physics objects of the scene. Everything has collisions. If I push this little rock off here, it's going to go falling down. The other great thing that we can do is change the lighting. Full dynamic lighting helps us work much faster. We could also make the most of Unreal Engine's volumetric effects. The dynamic lighting really helped us on our short film. It meant that we could iterate very quickly on our shots and adjust things in real time. We never had to stop and wait for renders. Everything could be adjusted right then and there. Here you can see me tweaking the fog and some of Unreal Engine's post-processing effects, like chromatic aberration, vignetting, and film grain. There's no smoke and mirrors here, guys. There's no real-time ray tracing, just the vanilla version of Unreal Engine 4, combined with the photorealistic and massive Megascans asset library, fully optimized for games and VR out of the box. By having a world-class game engine and all the photorealistic building blocks you could possibly need from day one, you can focus your creativity where it matters the most, building fun, meaningful, and immersive experiences. We are one step closer to fully interactive worlds, indistinguishable from reality. Okay, so these photoreal assets called Megascans are currently already being used in games coming out this year in 2019, such as this month's release of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare uses basically the same process they are calling photogrammetry where they take real-world photos of buildings, guns, landscapes, and scanning them into a game, and of course making edits to the triangle count and scaling it down for current-gen consoles where needed. This adds a new level of realism to games, and it's going to be something next-generation consoles use in addition to real-time ray tracing to really take next-gen to a new level of photorealism. Now obviously, since AAA developers are already making games that use this technique right now for current gen, you can bet going forward for PS5 it would be commonplace for this in games like Assassin's Creed, Tomb Raider, Battlefield, Call of Duty, Star Wars Battlefront, Final Fantasy, Monster Hunter, so on and so forth. Basically any and every AAA game will start using the process of mega scans in combination with real-time ray tracing. The most amazing thing about these processes, along with the added SSD drives, is that this will actually cut down on how long it takes to make a game. In the past, developers need to create from scratch their own rocks with their own textures, build their own buildings, trees and grass, etc. But with photogrammetry and mega scans, which now they have thousands of those assets for use for developers, they can be used quickly and can be edited stretched and changed on the fly during the game making process and i'll leave a link in the description for the full tutorial for you guys to check it out to see for yourself how it works but also even though ray tracing isn't required to make this look amazing 
Ray tracing will also cut down the work needed for developers to create their own light shadow maps and custom lighting, since real-time ray tracing will create its own light sources automatically if implemented to do that in next generation games. Also, believe it or not, ray tracing will help cut down game file sizes as well. Since pre-baked shadow maps eat up space just like a texture map does, ray tracing will eliminate the extra storage to load for many of the shadow types used in current gen games. The big key secret though of next gen is going to come from the mobile graphics side of things. And that's where this new Switch hardware coming in the not too distant future very soon is going to be a key determining factor in bringing the next gen to the masses including for portable play even without ray tracing as you saw in that demo. In order for the new Switch to have the ability to use things like mega scans and photogrammetry, the main thing it will need is more system memory to accomplish it, including higher memory bandwidth. The current Switch in the market simply has too low of a memory bandwidth, as we've discussed before, to load things like that, and the memory is outdated LPDDR4 from 2014, running at 26 gigabytes per second. So the new more powerful Switch that is coming with the reported sharp EXO screen will need to have at least PS4 level performance with a much greater memory bandwidth, namely LPDDR5 or a higher clocked LPDDR4X at the very least. A lot of the newer tablets and smartphones are using 8 gigabytes and some even 12 gigabytes of LPDDR4X and LPDDR5. A common issue noticed directly by the release dates of games on Switch is that the development time on the Switch takes too long for developers to even release their ports day and date as other platforms. The only AAA game of the few the Switch has got ported from the PS4 generation that has released day and date has been Mortal Kombat 11. The rest all have been late ports or ports that were announced day and date and then delayed to a future date like the recently delayed Doom Eternal which was delayed in general overall for all platforms but delayed specifically for the Nintendo Switch beyond all the other platforms guaranteeing it to release last. So moving forward for both ease of development for Nintendo themselves and getting most if not all big AAA third party ports and getting them day and date. This new Switch has the amazing potential to use the current breakthroughs in mobile technology that are now factually giving better performance than the base model PS4 in 2019 right now. Mobile devices like the Surface Pro X, the new iPad Pro, and the upcoming Samsung Galaxy smartphones which will have RDNA Navi graphics. Not only that, but it was just reported a couple days ago that for notebook laptops, AMD will be releasing their brand new Ryzen mobile APUs with not only Navi graphics, but also one of the variants will come with a 12 core Zen 2 processor running at 15 watts. 12 cores at 15 watts, guys, that's absolutely incredible. Which proves that the Surface Pro X's SoC, the SQ1, is legit, since it was reported to run at two teraflops at seven watts. This new 12 core Zen 2 Ryzen APU with Navi graphics will no doubt be able to run games with either similar to Surface Pro X or better in terms of performance from the looks of it. This goes to show that mobile technology is blurring the lines between portable and home console capabilities, mainly due to the new extremely efficient 7 nanometer process that basically all electronics manufacturers are using now. So the key to next generation appears to be compatibility and ease of development and porting for all game developers, bringing games like a new Call of Duty that is a true next gen Call of Duty on the go, not just something like Call of Duty Mobile for example, can actually expand the gaming population to greater heights than ever before. Nintendo has started this with the Switch concept, which is a great concept, and it's so far been a big success, but no doubt, the biggest request for most users who own a Switch, and I've seen it said more and more throughout 2019 especially, is that they would like to have all the big games coming out on other consoles, not just to have them, but to have them run well, to look good, and to be day and date ports. Also, on top of that, we have very clear evidence that Nintendo really does want these games in their platform. With them getting ports like The Witcher 3 on the Switch, even though it's a late port, it shows Nintendo wants all these types of AAA games on their platform, if it's feasible and actually able to be ported, that is. So in my opinion, what you are seeing on Switch with games like Skyrim, Doom, Wolfenstein 2, Mortal Kombat 11, and The Witcher 3 is a preview of things to come from Nintendo going forward. The Switch has passed the test. Nintendo fans want these AAA games on their platform. Now Nintendo will be going all in, so to speak, and put all the recent breakthroughs in mobile technology to use by releasing the next new iteration of the Switch that will effectively transition Nintendo into the next gen smoothly when PS5 and Xbox Scarlet release in holiday 2020. 
all the public evidence has been shown, all the reports have been made, and all the history of Nintendo always releasing a new console on time for a new generation of consoles is all lining up to happen exactly on schedule. The future is bright and the technology is ready. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching and all your support. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, share it with others, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.